Welcome to Hope Talks Podcast with Grayson Willis and Pastor Margaret Michael, where you'll hear inspiring stories that are filled with hope and good news in Jesus Christ. You can also search for our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and TuneIn. We would love your feedback and invite you to take a short, anonymous survey. You can find the link to the survey in the show notes. Welcome to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. I'm Grayson Willis. And I'm Pastor Margaret Michael. And we'd like to say Happy Mother's Day to the mothers listening. Uh, Happy Mother's Day to my mom. And uh, Pastor Margaret, if you'd like to introduce our guest today. Sure. Well, I'm excited um, to have the Executive Director of Bridge of Hope with us today, Chris (laughs) Hoover Seidel. We have a mutual friend, and today is a special day. Um, Today is a day that we are celebrating mothers. We celebrate women today. And you being a part of Bridge of Hope, which is near and dear to my heart, as I was able to be their part um, through the inception of that and the startup. And so I know how important this ministry is for moms, single moms, single homeless moms in particular. And so today, thank you, um, Chris, for being with us and just uh, sharing with us for a little bit. Thank you for having me and for the foundational work you've laid in the organization. (laughs) It was all joy. That was Really, um, I learned a lot um, in those years and made some friendships that have lasted and just grateful for these types of programs in our community because they're so needed in today's world. But before we get there, tell us a little bit about you and kind of how you grew up. You want to start there? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I grew up in Pennsylvania and um, at a very young age, I knew what it meant to be in a family that was headed by a single mother Mm. and the support uh, around us that was so necessary Mm. to make sure that we were okay, whether it was my babysitter or our grandparents that lived nearby. um, I really understood at a young age the importance of having a community surrounding you that you could depend on and how much that meant to my mother. Yeah, I grew up in rural Pennsylvania, uh, attended Messiah College, and uh, joined the Mennonite Church um, through some volunteer experience with Mennonite Central Committee. That was after I had started a teaching career. Yes, and then uh, we came back to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, I attended seminary, got some church leadership experience, and then we moved down here to be part of the EMU community. So you were talking about just what it was like to have um, a community around you Mm -hmm. Um, as a young child. Did you have siblings? Did you, there are more than one? Yeah, I I have a sister. Yeah, very good. So, uh, and you watched a community that come around you and and that's foundational for you when you look back. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, were you? A, was your family a part of a church? Was that a part of the fabric of your life growing up? Actually, yes. Uh, eventually, we we became part of a church that actually became a cult. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a very um, traumatic Ooh. early experience of mm. church, mm. Um, which is uh, part of the reclaiming uh, journey that I've been on uh, in my adult life mm. and part of the, re- well, a big reason why I went to seminary mm. as well. Wow. Mm. Isn't it amazing how those negative experiences can cause us to dig in and make sure that we know that we know that we know you know yeah. and and get a better grounding and a foundation right um, yeah yeah i would say my journey has been marked uh by points of redemption where mm-hmm. i'm not even looking to make it happen it just kind of happens it opens for me to uh, be able to in some way revisit something that was extremely painful for me and hopefully offer a space of healing mm-hmm. um, where that has been, and live into a space of healing myself. Um, yes. So I'm really, I'm really grateful for that. You know, I think of the words "beauty from ashes." I think of um, that He restores years the locusts have eaten. Right? Mm-hmm. God is a God of redemption and mm-hmm. restoration and reconciliation. And when you've experienced that, tell us what that looks like. Then lived out as you experience those moments of redemption 
What does that do for you, and how do you share that with others? Mm. Well, it's interesting that you use the beauty for ashes, a scripture, because my daughter's name is Phoenix, uh, because I truly believe in that and the power of that. Mm. And sharing it with others, I mean, I think, you know, the work of Bridge of Hope has really given me an amazing opportunity to invite others into this space of providing healing and nurturing and supportive community through Mm. loving our neighbors. Mm. You know, Bridge of Hope really employs the use of the word neighboring to help us to understand that these are mutually transformative relationships. Relationships. Mm-hmm. Jesus calls us to love our neighbors because we all need, mm-hmm. we all need it. We yeah. all need to be grown mm-hmm. <laughs> by loving our neighbors, to be challenged, mm-hmm. to be, um, yeah, to be taught, to be healed in, mm-hmm. in relationship with loving our neighbors. And it's, it's messy work sometimes, mm-hmm. and it, it's not always easy, but um, boy, having been kind of front row and center to this work and this program mm-hmm. in our community the last five years, I've really seen some amazing stories and testimonies unfold. Yeah. So how did you get connected with Bridge of Hope? Hmm. Well, I had first learned about it when I was living in Lancaster County, which is where Bridge of Hope originated That's right. back in the 80s. And I was just invited by a friend to be part of creating things for a fundraiser and learned about Bridge of Hope for the first time then. And was living down here for almost a year before I even realized there was a chapter, Mm. a Bridge of Hope in Harrisonburg in Rockingham County, and happened to see that when I was exploring job possibilities, and there it was. So it was really through the job search that I found it here. You know, one thing that I learned, uh, it's something that has been a part of just become a fabric of my life and something that's really helped me in ministry when we're working with others Everyone has to be the driver of their own life. Mm. And Mm -hmm. we can encourage people. Mm -hmm. But that's something that I learned through Bridge of Hope. Through uh, One of the ladies from Lancaster came down to do a training. And I will never forget that. The importance of being there for others, being a neighbor, Mm -hmm. but not trying to impose Mm -hmm. what we believe is best, but to be that encouraging person. Mm -hmm. Um, in the life of someone who has to learn to make decisions mm-hmm. um, on, you know, and grow their self-confidence. And I think that's the important thing. Like in the past couple of years, as we think of some things we've been through, right, mm-hmm. um, in our world, and we can all have an opinion, but if we can love our neighbor um, as ourself, um, man, the world can be different. And these women's lives are different Mm -hmm. um, as people choose to neighbor in that sort of a way. Can you talk to us a little bit about you grew up, came into this with experience, Mm -hmm. and uh, now you're giving back um, to other moms. Talk to us a little bit about that, just whatever it is that you want to share. Today, there are people listening that maybe they know someone maybe they are that mom that Mm. needs support but what is it what would you say today on that subject of having that lens to look through it's different from someone that doesn't have that lens to look through so just giving insight Mm. because we all probably have some in our lives that need some support sure yeah, as do we at times, you know, I, I think sometimes the support networks that we have, we take for granted because they're just part of our lives, right? And um, I really love that you brought up that self-determination piece because I think, you know, we emphasize community and we emphasize loving our neighbors, but within that is is empowerment and agency for mm. each mother, for each family, which is so necessary, right? I think there's a trap of wanting to fix things. Mm-hmm. Of and, and this is something that we try to be very clear with our, our volunteers. You know, we, we go through a rigorous training, really talk about a trauma-informed, strength-based approach where we're not fixing anything, that's right? right? And, mm-hmm. and sometimes that's the hardest part, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> and, and especially when you see a need that could so easily be turned by a resource or something it's just it doesn't actually you know there are readiness pieces there are you know agency pieces that need us to hold space in a way that's loving and encouraging and understanding and I think that's where we tend to um you know when we want to fix something and it's not ours to do, that's where God can do work with us, right? Yes. Um, so that's that mutually transformative piece. Yes. And really, I will say, 
what I have seen over the years as I've, I've watched this program work is that there comes a point uh, in a program when a woman will will get to a point where she is ready for the narrative to change, mm-hmm. right? And she's outgrown and outlived the old narrative. It's not something she wants to continue to be in anymore. And that narrative could be anything, right? And she's living into a new narrative. And that's where the sparks start Mm -hmm. to go. And we see, okay, there she is. And so it's really important to allow and nurture that space in the program for you know, program participants and families, but also for ourselves in some ways, like where, where are the sparks going to fly for us? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, I think, you know, one thing I would really like to emphasize is that, you know, when we think about homelessness, um, we tend to think about what happened, what went wrong, what bad decisions did this person make? And we don't always know the story, right? And there can be all these like judgments that flood in. Right. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'd really like people to understand about homelessness is that there are very systemic causes of homelessness that are not in people's control. And the top three of those, and these all impact the families that we serve, are one, lack of affordable housing. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that, just looking around at our community. Um, Lack of a living wage. Um, And if you're talking about a single parent and a single income, that's really huge, right? Mm -hmm. And then domestic violence Mm -hmm. has touched a lot of the families that we serve. And so, but I also would like people to know that, you know, a lot of the the women that come to us are already so incredibly resourceful. It's not like, I mean, there has to be a readiness for a a program like Bridge of Hopes. There has to be, because we meet weekly with uh, our program families. Um, There's monthly budgeting. There's, you know, uh, you know, they're getting together with their neighboring volunteers. We have Bridge of Hope events every other month. This is a lot. And it's a lot uh, to expect from a single parent who is, you know, already responsible for everything else and managing everything else mm-hmm. in their family. Um, so these are really powerful and strong women that we are basically, you know, partnering with, you know, yeah. walking alongside mm-hmm. Um, And learning from in many ways. And what's beautiful is these are also future leaders in our community. We have two program graduates sitting on our board of directors at the moment. And we also have a program graduate um, that is starting uh, a new Bridge of Hope in Warren County, Greater Warren County, uh, Mm -hmm. around the Front Royal area, who's working with our national office to get that up and running. That's amazing. Like that, one of that your, is, yeah. those are amazing ripple effects yes. too of all of this. One of your graduates is a part of yes. this body. Yes. And, um, yeah. Um, just thriving. Yes. Um, just thriving. Yes. I, it was such a good program for her to go through. So, yeah. And I love that you've, brought up that it's not just that mom and the family that's getting help and that's growing and learning, but it is a place where we learn Mm -hmm. as we, you know, engage with others. And we all have our preferences, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) We all have our, you know, the things that we like, maybe the way we like to do things. And to be able to be there and to be open Mm -hmm. and to allow um, people to grow and to bloom and, and how God has created them to do that and to, for decision making. Mm-hmm. Um, it's powerful. It's a, it is a place of empowerment. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. If there's a way that somebody would like to support Bridge of Hope or they know of somebody that's in need of the services that Bridge of Hope offers, um, if you want to share the website or yeah. any contact information. Absolutely. So um, if somebody w- would like to um, inquire about the program, uh, they can go to our website, hr.bridgeofhopeinc.org, and click on the Get Help tab, and you can submit an inquiry through that page. Um, as far as supporting the work of Bridge of Hope, actually, for Mother's Day, I'd love to highlight that if you go to that website, again, hr.bridgeofhopeinc.org, um, and click on the Give tab, there is um, there is a giving category called Women of Hope, mm-hmm. and you can give in dedication to a woman in your life but you can give toward families uh, to end family homelessness in our community. 
Um, so uh, those are two ways to use the website. And another way to get involved is to actually let us know if there's a, a small group of four to ten people from your congregation or your Christian faith community, whether that's a knitting circle or a house church or a small group that might be interested in the role of neighboring with a Bridge of Hope family. Mm -hmm. That's another really important need that we have. We we are stepping into a new chapter of growth. Um, we doubled our case management staff as of January and are working toward uh, nearly tripling the number of families we can serve at one time, um, which really helps to address the need, the growing need that we've seen over the last couple of years. And so that means we need new churches and more churches uh, neighboring with us because um, we can't start the program Without those neighboring volunteers, it's a three-way program model with the family and the neighboring volunteers and the case manager, mm -hmm. and we need all of those parts to be able to launch a program for a family in our community. So if maybe someone's a part of a church and they only have maybe two or three people from their church, they could partner with another like you mm -hmm. all can partner yes. them, right, with another yeah. congregation, which mm -hmm. is another beautiful piece of coming outside the walls of our church and yes. engaging for the community, for the glory of Absolutely. God. Absolutely. We could have multiple church. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I mean, cross church groups or whatever yeah. you want to call them. <laughs> yeah. Um, just churches that partner. I think that would be a beautiful thing too. Um, if you, I know we've talked about Bridge of Hope, but if you want to highlight some of the services that you all offer mm -hmm. um, and some of the programs. Sure. So uh, the biggest part of our program for families is the rental assistance program. So we are a housing first program, which means we want to end the homelessness uh, first and foremost. And then we come around with this arms around approach, holistic program that on average is 18 months in length, anywhere between 12 and 24 months. So this is time intensive. And you know, so first ending the homelessness, so locating housing for a family that they would be able, according to their budget, to be able to sustain payments for, rental payments for, after they're done with the program, as well as paying their other bills. And we offer support for budgeting and anything needed there. Uh, but the rental assistance uh, pays off the down payment for the apartment and first month's rent. And then our portion decreases in accordance with the family's budget. So maybe $25, $50, $100 each month until that family is paying the full amount. And what this does is it gives families time to... Uh, build credit, um, pay down debt, build savings, maybe look for a new job, take job training. Lots of possibilities there to shore up their financial uh, position um, without the fear of losing their home. And then the other part of what the families receive directly is the case management services. So case managers meeting uh, weekly with the families and making sure that whatever the family's goals are, and so the families drive the program and we say they know what they need, they know what they want to accomplish, they set their goals, the case managers are there to offer support in getting them connected to resources to meet those goals so they can be successful. Goals can be so many different things like uh, getting a driver's license, getting a GED, getting a new job, finalizing a divorce, um, it, just so many things. It's all unique to each family. Mm -hmm. So I know that obviously you can't share details with us, but is there just a snippet of a story mm -hmm. of someone who has been through the program and just sharing how the Ministry of Bridge of Hope impacted them, if there's a story that you can share with us. Sure, sure. Um, there's so many. My heart is going toward uh, one family in particular that um, was in our program through the time of the pandemic. Mm. And, you know, it was really interesting. We had no idea you know, when the pandemic started, like, how is this going to impact our work? Right. <laughs> you know, fundraising, volunteer, mm -hmm. you know, we had no idea. And so uh, to be able to watch this family, so a woman who came out of an abusive relationship uh, was, um, you know, leaving that relationship, getting a divorce, creating a better uh, life and um, community for her children, uh, 
uh, her teenagers to grow up. And she had not only the pandemic and the social distancing uh, during her time in the program, but also some medical issues. And so she was very limited on what she could do, you know, in the program and with her neighboring volunteers. It was just really beautiful to see how these neighbors uh, just found creative ways to come around and love and encourage this family through so many ups and downs and how how this woman ended up telling her story as if she was putting together a mosaic of picking up all of the scattered pieces that she felt like she came in with and into the program was putting them all together into something really beautiful and that's where you know the narrative shifted and mm-hmm. she really understood how worthy she was mm-hmm. and how beautiful her life was mm-hmm. Um, and what she had to offer. Um, And that's really significant coming out of an abusive relationship, right? Um, And also being able to model and hold that space for her children. It's so powerful. And also it's a beautiful story because, you know, as as teenagers, they're a little bit older. When she was having a medical issue, uh, the neighboring volunteers got on to, you know, FaceTime or Zoom or one of those things Mm -hmm. and virtually uh, had dropped off some groceries and virtually... Uh, led the kids through preparing a meal for their mom. Oh, wow. So <laughs> just a beautiful, creative way that like all of these obstacles were overcome and that loving support was still met mm-hmm. with just a little bit of creativity. And it was, you know, fun and meaningful for everyone. And the mom felt like she was being taken care of. And, uh, and yeah, it just really warms my heart mm-hmm. um, because, you know, that was really meaningful to her. And I know that she's since reached out to people that she knows that needs Bridge of Hope and has recommended that. So she's just been a light um, for other people as well. Sounds like she's become an advocate for yeah, that very thing. Absolutely. And, you know, I, thinking about your story and how your um, childhood and having that experience of being uh, raised by a single mom, mm-hmm. um, if you can pull that thread through your life, mm. th- through the tapestry of your life, right, and see how God has taken that and given you a calling and mm. uh, placed yeah. you in a place that you give back and are able to offer ways of redemption and reconciliation. And then to see moms come yeah. through the program mm. and are doing the same thing, you know, mm. and becoming advocates. And mm. there's such joy in that, I'm mm-hmm. sure, for you. Mm-hmm to not only be able to give back and, and to help others, but then to see others helping others. Yeah. It's really powerful. To yeah. see them on the board and mm-hmm. engaging, opening another mm-hmm. um, bridge of hope. Mm-hmm. That is powerful. Yeah. Uh, and so it's not a program that just gets them by. Mm-hmm. This is a redemptive, restorative work of reconciliation. And when I think about reconciliation Grayson it might have been your dad talked about the work of reconciliation that of taking the hand of the person in the hand mm-hmm. of God and mm-hmm. and being that minister of reconciliation and then seeing sometimes I've, I've had this thought of it's almost like we have to believe for someone so they can believe for themselves mm-hmm. and it's a priestly function of that communication with God and um, on their behalf but then to see the work where they are engaging mm-hmm. that work themselves. Powerful picture of the mm-hmm. church and of, mm-hmm. of what Jesus calls us to. Um, mm-hmm. So thank you. Uh, I know a few mothers that have been through the program. I certainly don't know them all. One of the first moms that went through the program, to see her, we're friends on Facebook, and to even see like her and her husband came back into a restored relationship mm-hmm. and raising their kids together. But she needed that in those years. Mm-hmm. But just to see the redemptive work that continues to happen even after the program. Yeah, yeah. I really value the opportunity to be part of a chapter of these families' lives. And, um, you know, it's it's really obvious to me um, that God is with these families mm-hmm. before they ever mm-hmm. hear about mm-hmm. Bridge of Hope. And God is with these families way after, (laughs) you know, always, right? And um, just to recognize, you know, we don't work alone and um, there is a much bigger presence there doing work. And that, I think that's so sustaining for us as staff to remember, you know, it's not all up to us. It's not all up to any one person or one part of this community. This is all a community effort. And I think that's what 
God's kingdom is, right. is right. us right. working in community and relationship right. with yes. God mm-hmm. um, and finding Jesus on the margins of our society. You know, I think that I think that's also why Jesus calls us to love our neighbors, because we we get out of our comfort zone and we we find him mm-hmm. in the lives of people that maybe we wouldn't otherwise talk to or engage with. And as much as Bridge of Hope is a bridge to hope for families, mm-hmm. which we hope it is. Um, it's it's also a bridge uh, to neighboring for for the church, mm-hmm. um, which is the partner in this work, and it's it's a, a, a ministry that allows people to have a way to be engaged in meaningful relationships mm-hmm. and not tokenizing. Right, mm-hmm. Chris. Uh, just kind of in the last few moments, we have here two things. Number one, what are ways that people can pray? Mm-hmm for the ministry of Bridge of Hope and the families that y'all are helping us, as well as you all that are helping the families, and anything else that you want to share that we haven't asked you already or you haven't mentioned already. Mm, Thank you. Yeah, so, you know, prayer for our families. um, I would say, you know, not only praying for individual families and, um, you know, their strength and, uh, you know, relationships and children in those families um, who are also facing significant challenges because homelessness is traumatic and and losing a parent um, in whatever form that looks like is traumatic. And so making sure to remember the parents as well as the children. And I think also um, praying for guidance on how we can shift these systems that actually Mm -hmm. cause people to become homeless in the first place and to remain homeless, you know, um, and praying for more church groups uh, to come forward to partner with Bridge of Hope so that we can live into this growth of serving more families. That would be amazing. Thank you. You know, there's a scripture that I was reading over the weekend, and it really, the whole chapter of Isaiah 58 Mm -hmm. uh, really is good to go back and get the full context Mm -hmm. of what he is saying. He's talking about fasting. And picking up in verse 6, Is this not the kind of fasting I've chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. Mm -hmm. I just think that is a beautiful um, reminder that we are not here um, to fill a pew on Sunday morning, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, But we are here to answer the call. Mm -hmm. And There are so many needs within our community. I know that all of us have brokenness of some sort, Mm -hmm. correct? And maybe Bridge of Hope is not the one for everyone. But if there are folks listening today that this is speaking to their heart, maybe this is a place for someone to get involved. Um, But maybe it's some other. Sure. uh, But it's there are so many needs. And so here at the church, we have a 12-step program Celebrate Recovery, and there are just many needs Mm. for men and women Mm. in our community, and there are many ways to get involved. So on Mother's Day, I love that um, you took some time today to sit down Mm. with us and talk a little bit about Bridge of Hope and give hope for some folks maybe listening today that maybe there's someone in their life that they're just not sure what to do, and Mm -hmm. they now have another resource Maybe someone is listening today and they want to get involved. Well, Um, I love that you share that scripture because it really highlights what the invitation of Bridge of Hope is, which is to open our eyes, our hearts, our hands and our doors. And the only thing I haven't mentioned is that uh, we need landlord partners uh, to be part of the solution to the affordable housing crisis and that catch the vision of Bridge of Hope and want to be part of it. But just like you said, there are so many amazing agencies in our community, and we're so grateful for them because we partner with a lot of them Mm -hmm. and connect our families with a lot of them. So I think, you know, what we always encourage people to do is to listen to what God is stirring in your own heart and to respond to that, right? Right. Um, And 
you know, each one of us has an invitation and that's so beautiful. Right. And when we do that, we're truly listening. We're going to find right. the right place to step in. Yeah, yeah, that is, I couldn't have put it better myself. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, well, Chris, thank you for joining us on today's broadcast of Hope Talks. It's been great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate all you're doing in your congregation and the community. Uh, thank you for listening to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. We pray that as we've talked to Chris Hoover Seidel today, that it truly has been a half hour of hope for your life. And uh, once again, happy Mother's Day to the mothers listening today. May God bless. Hope Talks is sponsored by Church of the Nazarene Harrisonburg in partnership with Sunshine Ministries. Thanks for listening to today's podcast of Hope Talks. If you enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe for updates and the latest episodes. Also, if you're in the Harrisonburg, Rockingham County area, we invite you to listen on the radio each Sunday at noon on 1470 AM or 102.1 FM WBTX.